Music is said to be therapeutic for many. It can help to relax someone dealing with the loss of a loved one, or to focus for an upcoming exam. But for Adam Sickler, it helps to keep him going. No, I got a song for you. Sickler is a psychology major no, with a double minor in political science and music. Aside from his studies, Adam is involved in several different aspects of campus life. But aside from that, like I try to stay involved as much as possible. I'm a uh, new student orientation leader. I'm also on the uh, I'm a senator on the SG on the student government uh, student government association. Excuse me. Um, RA in here in Madison Square Hall. Although very accomplished at the collegiate level, Sickler has a very interesting past that has helped shape him into the person that he is today. During his high school years, Adam battled through substance abuse. When I was in high school, I, you know, over time, I, you know, I find that I, growing up, you know, and maturing in a lot of different ways, you know, I've kind of been through a lot of different phases, a lot of different things. Um, I spent a lot of time when I was in high school, you know, in the, in the drinking a lot, you know, partying a lot, and, um, you know, using a lot of different varied substances. Um, it kind of created a lot, number of different problems for me. Um, I, uh, I kind of struggled with that for a really long time. I was, you know, very big, heavy drug user uh, for you know, a number of different substances, you know, mostly like hallucinogenic things. She's just a small town girl living in a lonely world. To me, it was more of a just like a. It was more just like kind of an exploration thing. You know, I originally started drinking because um, I was like very against it until I got to high school when I was with the cross country team and my team captain was like telling me all these stories about the parties I've been to and just like the ridiculous things that they do and I was like that sounds like fun you know I kind of want to get in on that so you know I went out with them and I drank a couple times and I kind of liked it so I just kind of kept doing it and that kind of segued into other things you know I tried uh, tried pop because my friend was just like hey it's kind of like being drunk why don't you try it see what it's like and I tried it and initially you know I was kind of torn between like doing that and uh, and uh, because I was a, I was a very serious track athlete for a really long time, so that was the kind of the the, the thing that held me back for a while, but then eventually shifted the balance. But like I like I was saying though, I think initially what kind of caused me to to um, explore this was curiosity, and also kind of just want to be part of the group at the same time. I think that's what everybody does. Like you know, when it, a lot of people will come to college and they're just like, well, this is what everybody else is doing, and even though they might want, not want to admit it, you know, that, I feel like that's kind of part of the reasoning behind everybody's choice to drink. Amy Mason, the resident director of Reed Hall, is well aware of the pressures that college students face when first arriving on a college campus. Yet she knows that there are several options students have should they ever find themselves in a situation where they are facing substance abuse. Basically, I would say that a lot of it is probably a new environment, especially for first-year students. Um, currently, I am working in Reed Hall with 150 first-year students. Um, it's a lot of transition that coming from high school and having your mom and dad be there every day to say, where's your homework? Let me see it. Let me look it over. Or where are you going tonight? When are you taking the car? It's just so structured. And they're there, and they still have that authority, and you still live under their roof, but you're here, and all of a sudden you're free. Um, well, for a benefit for us as uh, Res Life staff members, we always have um, someone from the counseling center on call. So 24 hours a day, I have one of the counseling staff members. I have their personal cell phone number. I have their home phone number, where I can call them at any point um, for pretty much any topic, and whether it just might be advice on student issues that are occurring, um, or whether it could be something more serious, and that they're there to even come on campus and be available um, any time of the day. As for Adam, he is using his experiences to try and help others that he knows to be having a difficult time with substances, and also keeping close to him what's important, his music. My biggest thing is trying to put it in perspective what's actually happening. It's what's perceived by the person and what's actually happening. Like, 
you have to kind of step out of your own shoes and look at it from like all your friends' perspectives. Because I think the changes that happen because of um, substance abuse aren't necessarily apparent to someone who's doing it. It's more like you're going to be acting differently and people are going to notice it. I remember, like, you know, back when I used, when I was kind of heavy, heavy user, whenever I spent a lot of time smoking, like, that's what I was doing. I was spending my time smoking instead of, like, you know, take that two hours instead and just kind of, like, sit in my room and write a song or, you know, practice and, like, just, you know, the effects that it has on a voice, too, and they're kind of profound. I'm I constantly, it's constantly on my mind, like, I'm driving forward, I'm doing well, I don't want to just take two steps backwards. So I guess that is kind of, the music is a very big driving force in keeping me away from it.